Want to look like the best? Then get their gear. The USA Swimming National Team collection from Arena, Tier, plus a whole lot more. Available at SwimOutlet.com, the official online shop of USA Swimming. Everyone gets amped up for their races, and I always calm down. I find my happy place, I silence everything out, and understand that this is going to really hurt, you know, and I, I, I kind of have to go into that deep, that deep part of your mind where you're like, I have to be okay with how bad this hurts, and I have to want it to hurt more than anyone else. Zane Grothy has walked through fire. He knew his career was done, but he gave it one more shot. At the 2017 U.S. Winter Nationals, Grothy wowed fans with two American records. 407.2 in the 500 free, 1418.2 in the 1650. Zane, take us back. What led you up to knowing your career was over? I had a lot of belief that I was better than what I was doing. I swam my whole senior year of college slower than what I'd been doing and jumped back with the coach I had been successful with, swam three taper meets with him getting slower on each one. The third one being in this pool right here, I swam at 1650 and I was so out of it, I flipped turned at the, at the 1650 mark without even realizing it. I had to stop in the middle of the pool and swim back to the edge. And I, I was walking back to my hotel and I had to stop and I sat there for like half an hour like, this is it, that was everything. You know, I had so much faith in my coach, I realized it was, I, I, I decided it was me that had peaked and been done, you know, and I realized I, that was everything I had. Everyone's been there, that moment you know you're going to quit. When you were sitting there for 30 minutes, what was going through your head? I stopped and sat down, I was just, I cried my eyes out, and it just, you know, I, I felt heartbroken, you know, I, I love the sport of swimming, and it, it's, it's always been there for me when I needed something to get away from school or, you know, family or something, and just, it was, it had, it's like it turned its back on me and said, I'm done with you, and you gotta move on. What pulled you out of that mindset? What got you back? I realized being that I've been a swimmer my entire life, and knowing that I should be getting bigger and stronger and doing better, I, I decided, I've been under this coach for about five years now, and his philosophy, I figured, you know, I owe it to myself and my mom and my dad, you know, who've been financially supporting me for you guys. I owe it to myself to try something new and do, do what I've always been looking for. So, you know, that's, that's how I kind of ended up in Indiana. How much did you really believe that you would find success? With a new start. You know, it may have been one percent of me that just said, "There's, there's more, there's more." And I laid in bed all night, just kind of staring at the ceiling. And well, through that night, I just kept thinking that one percent became four percent, became ten percent. And it's like you got to try again. You got to try one more time. Try something new. You've always wanted to do something different. Now's the time. You've got nothing to lose. Now's the time to go risk it all. What do you tell that kid that's watching this video right now? that wants to quit. What's the growthy advice? It's just having an open line of communication. I've always kind of been in that position too where if I've got a problem, I internalize it and try to fix it myself. And there are a lot of people out there willing to help, especially in the swimming community, whether it's your coach, another coach, or you know, your parents, your friends, your teammates, your, your opponents even. You know, I, just, I talked to Cody, you know, a guy I've always raced growing up, and he said, you know, yeah, let's find something new for you or something. So that's where I have to start. There's a lot of people out there willing to help, you know, and a lot of people who've been through this before. Swimming is an older sport, and people have been in that position before, and they've probably been through the same experience. Have you had time to reflect on what you've accomplished? Two American records. Sort of. It's like I've had to convince myself to, to, to think about it, like, hey, like, you just did something pretty significant. Like these aren't nobody's records. I think like these are these are big names, big times. I've been sitting around waiting, you know, stuff like that. But I think the reason because of that is I know I've got more coming. I feel like this is just a stepping stone on you know my road to you know however long it's gonna take me to peak. You know, I honestly I would really like to look forward to a shave and taper in the December of 2019 for uh, for the U.S. Nationals and short push yards again and trying to blow those times out of the water again. You know, they always tell you like all the people who are really successful there was always there's points where they failed and stuff like that and um, one of the things that's kept me going so long is having fun with it and I, I you know when I wasn't successful I realized I wasn't having fun but I've, I've gotten over that I've failed so many times now that it, it, it doesn't mean anything to me anymore and I and I, I've, I've now learned through the hard way that 
even if you don't go the best time at the end of the season or you blow missing the Olympic team, you know, or the team you've been going for, the cut, the, the, the place, the person you're trying to beat, whatever failure that happens, you have to take it in stride and understand that just because that was what you defined as success doesn't mean you weren't successful. You know, I went to Olympic trials and went a best time in that 400 even though I didn't make the team and I, I had to look back on that finally and realize I got better. That's what I wanted and I've got to have fun with the process, you know.